My name is Jonathan Parks, and welcome to Jonathan's Nature Craft. I must inform you that I do not live in this house by myself, but live here with other people. Sometimes other members of the household may have to walk through areas where I might be recording with other family members on the phone. If you hear any noise like that, please feel free to disregard. We are doing our best to get noise-canceling equipment, which may at least keep you from hearing exactly what is being said. Thank you for considering. Well, this was a little moment. I decided I'd come back on and see what I could do here, and even the video I uploaded this morning was one I did right before work, but I think we're going to kind of debate a little here, decide what step we're going to take next on these little bears, so I say that we've pretty much kind of taken care of what we want to, what we need to, but... I'd say for a little step, maybe it'd be a good idea just to kind of, you know, work at the little insides of the legs and need to turn this down so you all can see what I'm doing, but we just kind of made a little cut along here where I'm talking about and just make it so... The insides of the legs are going to come out a little better, more right, I say, and see how they're going to do. And when it all comes down to this, there's just going to be little workways we talk about taking. And as for this kind of work, it's just kind of what I see fit best for some of us, especially for me. I always like to make these little animals like this and do little things, I say, and, you know, so many little stories I'd be sharing on the internet so much and have so much to say and tell, I say, that there's friends I like to share little things with, and, you know, I kind of went back to the Pacini's restaurant tonight, got a little tiramisu, a little Italian dessert, and, you know, sometimes I say that we're a little careful now and then with the sugar. I mean, I like sweets. I eat a lot of them, but the doctor kind of told me to kind of watch it a little bit, probably do a little too much of it, but I'd say one thing for sure about work is that my tasks are kind of increasing just a little bit. I've got a few more things I need to start paying attention to, and I'm getting used to the job, and I'm learning to do them, and at least it's not, you know, too many things at once, like it probably was at the last school where I worked at, but I mean, it's just really the kind of work that I'd say helps a lot, and Oh, little stories I'd like to tell about how we had those little in-service and clean-up days at the end of the year last year to make up for all our inclement weather days. Little funny story I'll tell you about it. And, you know, in a little meeting that some of the head staff had with us, some of the district staff, they, we talked about workplace toxic behavior and you know, this was just kind of a little bit of a thing, a challenge to me. So it's like this little thing where we had to scan a little QR code on our phones and have this little thing come up where we had to name a toxic behavior in our workplace. And like I've told you all recently, I've switched over to an iPhone because my Android doesn't do much. And since my phone didn't, wouldn't it really scan QR codes for things like that, that was kind of just, I'd say, the reason why we um, sort of had to borrow somebody else's phone to put something in. There were all different kinds of answers, I mean, and 
they told me to name something and couldn't really think of anything right off, so I decided to put on there something that just irritated me. It was the loud music in there, so I put in loud music. Other people had other things like gossiping, name calling, which really are toxic behaviors, and somebody put down hand lack of hand washing, and that's not a toxic behavior, but it is a little sanitation thing, but where I put down loud music for mine, I didn't know that the lady was going to read them aloud, so tell you what happened next, but before I do that, I've got a little something to demonstrate to you about how I'm going to make the same little step on this little bear, but I'll tell you that she said, let's go over some of the toxic behaviors we put in your workplace. She looked over mine first and she said, loud music. Now is loud music a toxic behavior? She said, no, but it is inconsiderate. And thankfully I'm not there anymore. I've even heard it said that, that the guy who did that is not doing it anymore. I mean, it's not my problem anyway, because I'm not there anymore, and so glad I'm not. So, that's been taken care of on my part. No longer have to worry about that. But, it was just a little crazy over there, and, you know, we all just kind of had to put little different things down, and I'd say that there was just some little thing where... You know, when I face challenges like that, sometimes with the way my vocabulary works, I don't always know exactly what to put down, so I just kind of put down anything random if I just think it would be something that irritated me, so no need to worry about that. I'm no longer there, and I'd say that as for now... We got the insides of these legs done. We probably will kind of round off the feet on each side. Try to make them so they're going to go a little rounder and thinner. Make it so they're going to be just like the bear needs to be. Like the bear that is actually in the woods. And... You know, there's been different kinds of bears I've seen. I've even seen teddy bears and everything that were carved out of wood. And I think we're going to go along the front here a little bit. I kind of remember when I was a kid, we never saw this movie, but there was often a trailer on the TV advertising a movie called Bushwhacked. And in the commercial, this man comes face to face with a grizzly bear when he's on his hike and he looks up at the grizzly bear and says, it's Winnie the Pooh. So that was kind of a little silliness that kind of carried into my life. And then, you know, when I got to be about 20 and was going to my grandmother's house while she was babysitting these little girls, there was this one little girl, she wasn't even two years old yet at the time. And we had this book of animals, and in there, there was a picture of a brown bear up on a log and a deer hiding from it underneath the log. I used to show that bear in the pictures to the girls and say, look, it's Winnie the Pooh. And they'd get a little silly and carried away by it. And there was this one little girl I'd, who, you know, you asked her who it was, and she would just say, Pooh, just like she would when, you know, she kind of saw the real Winnie the Pooh in a drawing or whatever, but it would get a little silly here and there because one time my grandmother asks me, have you got her calling that bear Pooh? And then she says, you dodo birds, now she's going to think every bear is Pooh. And sure enough, I think that was kind of what happened for a while. You'd show her any bear and she'd say it was Pooh. And so that kind of got a little funny and eventually my grandmother convinced her that the one in the picture was not poo it was actually a bear but so with my grandmother she would say it was a bear but when I pointed to her I asked her who's that and she said poo 
And my grandma said to her, you're rotten. With me, you've been saying that was a bear. Oh, and it was all the, just the days of all the silliness I had in my youth. You know, shouldn't be teasing somebody so little, giving them reason to kind of think those funny little things. And, you know, in those days, I was even teaching toddlers in church, for that matter. Would show them the animals and give them a little silliness now and then. There's this one kid I had. Could tell you a little story about something funny he was calling me one day. And, you know, well, that, first of all, is the end of the bears. That's kind of all the carving we're going to do for this video. But I will tell you all a little bit of the rest of that story. One thing he was calling me one day, it was kind of a little bit hard with his toddler speech to tell exactly what we were saying, he was saying so. This older lady who had taught the class before me, who was still in there assisting as I was starting to teach, I mean, he, she, he said to her, I called Jonathan, and what he said after that, and she started kind of taking some guesses, asking him, was it this, was it that? Then he said, no, it was, and what he said, and strange i tell you you know it sounded like a bad word to me so i said to him i hope you're not saying what i think you're saying and she said to him you better not be saying bad words and funny little thing was i told you know i told my grandmother about him saying that because <coughs> even this little girl she babysat you know she would be trying to say real words but because of her little toddler mouth and way toddler's mouths haven't produced it sounded to my grandmother like she was saying a dirty word when she was trying to say a real word but whenever I kind of told her about what the kid at church was saying she said now that's very bad that sounds like something that would come out of that and mentioned a certain little kid like that in the extended family who had kind of been in a family environment where he had been around a lot of that, so he'd say those words, of course, and she'd say to me, I can't believe you have somebody at church who talks like that. So that was just little strange things we had in those days to deal with, and i tell you that there's another thing I come on to show I'll, I'll tell you all about these little hippos here. I carved these weeks ago and finished the them and burnt them and oiled them. And they didn't really come out all that detailed, but I kind of got to working on the little baby ones recently. The little baby ones that will go with the mothers once we get it all done. But these ones I've gotten some of the work done on, just have a little chance to sand off some of the blackening and burning that was done by the rotary tool, which is kind of what happens when you carve Purple Heart. It's the kind of wood that does that. And so that can be fixed. I've been told to actually use metal bits rather than sand bits when car power carving Purple Heart, because that would work a little better. And these ones I got a little further more finished on, and you can probably see that they're little tiny things, and got most of the sanding done on them, probably have a grit or two left to sand on them, add in the eyes and the ears, and the little places in the middle to make where the legs separate, and the little rotary tool lines to make the little hooves on their toes, and as for all this little work I do, I like to say that I thank you all for coming on and watching and tuning in. I'll have plenty more to share for the future. I appreciate all the, the fact that some others have come on to watch and even talk to a man at Pacini tonight who's among the servers who said he came on here to watch these videos and watch this channel and really liked it. And I'll tell you all that there's a little bit more I'll say, but save it for the next video maybe and thank you all for coming on 
appreciate you all so much and take care and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I hope to see you in the next video. Stay tuned.